Hi, I'm Apollonia. You may remember me from Purple Rain as leading lady to Prince, or from my band Apollonia 6. I've starred in films, TV shows, and I've been on the cover of magazines all over the world, including Playboy. I was also an LA Rams cheerleader. I'm going to take you with me. Welcome to my podcast, Apollonia Studio 6. Hi, I'm Apollonia, and welcome to my podcast, Apollonia Studio 6. And to my right is my wonderful co-host, Mr. Seth. Mr. Seth, tell me what's happening here today. What are we doing? What are we doing? Okay, so this is what we're doing. We got such great feedback from our mid-season wrap-up of season one that we are going to now wrap up the second half of season one for you. So we're going to talk about our great guests that we had in the second half of season one, Mr. Roy Bennett, oh. Autumn Rowe, wow. Anna Fantastic, wow. Joe Isgro, and of course, <laughs> Susanna Melvoin. Just amazing. Yes. Great friends and family. Yes. Wow. So let's get started. We started off second half of season one with our brother, our guy, Leroy Bennett. Roy Bennett. Uh, we love Roy. Roy Bennett, extraordinary uh, lighting technician. He's worked with the likes of Gaga. He actually did a lot of the lighting on stage in our movie, Purple Rain, back in the 80s. Uh, Roy Bennett is just brilliant. Yes, yes. And mm -hmm. Roy's interview, um, very well received by the fans. Mm -hmm. He was very open, very transparent about mm -hmm. his relationship with Prince and uh, um, some of the uh, internal conflicts and in Vanity Six and mm -hmm. uh, some things yes. during the, the Purple Rain period and after and beyond. So, um, yeah, Roy's interview was just great. It's fantastic. He was there, I mean, way before I was. Mm -hmm. uh, as we no, Roy Bennett was married to my sister and bandmate, Brenda Bennett from Apollonia 6 and Vanity 6 prior to uh, Apollonia 6. And even that must have been, we asked him, you asked him, how difficult was it for Roy Bennett to see his wife, Brenda, in a corset, traveling all over the country and yeah. dancing? and yeah. yeah. How did you feel when... Prince said, okay, I want your wife to be in this group, and I want her to be in this group in her underwear. <laughs> I knew yeah. you were going to ask yeah, that. Yep. And now you're in a relationship with um, her. Yikes. It was a little awkward. I have to admit, it mm -hmm. was it was tough at times. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I dealt with it. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I've read uh, articles in the past that you've done on uh, different books and things like that. And, and um, um, you talked about how when the girls got together and became a group, how, some, how it wasn't always harmonious, oh, no. especially <laughs> between Denise and oh, Brenda. Brenda. Yeah. You're asking. <laughs> well, I mean, Brenda was the only one that could sing. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And Prince would put the burden of vocals on onto Brenda mm -hmm. and so she would have to you know push push Denise along mm -hmm. and uh, it, it got heated a couple of times there was a serious fight at one of the shows at, at, they were back in their dressing room and I think Brenda had, Brenda had Denise up against the wall Prince had to come he goes can't you control your wife <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, you know, it's like it is, it, I, you know, well, I'm obviously pushed Brenda a little uh, bit too far. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know. That must have been tough. I know it was tough for me dancing around the world, you know, and my underwear. Yeah. But, you know, having a husband at the time must have been, you know, I was there as a witness. It was, you know, it was tough. We were traveling and away from home, away from the family and dancing for men all over the world. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> in our underwear. <laughs> oh, thank you, Prince. <laughs> and we also <laughs> talked about uh, filming the sex shooter video. Yes. 
that Roy was co-star. Roy and your and your mm-hmm. brother. That's right, George. Roy was uh, he was co-star to was it Susan? Little Susan. Mm-hmm. That's right. They put him opposite little Susan. Then he dropped the uh, the pearls that uh, he Roy Bennett had a little crush on little Susan Moonsey. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody did. Yeah. So many, so many, you know, she, so popular. Yeah. But yes, it was Roy Bennett and my brother George Gutero in the Sex Shooter video long form directed by Simon. Uh, no, Simon Fields was a producer directed by my discovery at the time, uh, Kenny Ortega, who later went on to make uh, tons of uh, high school musicals and yep. This Is It with Michael. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So yeah. we had George and Roy at a park downtown LA dancing up a storm. Uh, my brother wore leather pants and had a mimic playing the sax. And uh, then we had Roy and George dancing at the end of the video. Mm-hmm. I have the photos, which uh, Roy Bennett wants copy so he could show his kids. <laughs> 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 so much fun. Yes. We love you, Roy. Yes, yes, we do. Now, let's talk about our sister, Autumn Rowe. Oh, my gosh. Grammy Award winner, Autumn Rowe. An amazing talent. Uh, She's very forthright when it comes to songwriting and the protection of songwriters in America, well, in the world today. Mm -hmm. So many uh, difficulties when we write songs today uh, with all the streaming services and the lack of pay and the politics behind all of that. But Autumn really is a force to be reckoned with yeah yeah she uh humanitarian um amazing songwriter Mm -hmm. uh Mm -hmm. producer artist herself um and she is really getting some unbelievable recognition Mm -hmm. for her hard work which i think is um really 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 Mm -hmm. great we got to meet her uh through friends it's just an amazing you know when you start because of COVID, you know, we isolating and uh, we're starting to get back out and socialize with our friends, which is really nice. And that's how we met Autumn Rowe. We went out to an event. We met her. We gravitated towards her and it was wonderful. She just stood out like mm-hmm. this aura around her, her yeah. energy. Yeah. And uh, so we went out to a couple of her events and I invited her to come on the show and it was fantastic. Um, being a female creative in music, um, it is a lot harder for us to get credited properly. So like mm. f- for this Grammy that I won, I'm the eighth woman in history to win as a producer for album of the year. Jesus. Wow. Crazy. Second, that's a black woman after Lauren Hill who produced Santana. Oh. Right? Whoa. Yeah. It's crazy. You would think like a lot more Bravo. women. Thank you. That's so mm-hmm. awesome. That's so right. I get torn with being happy and sad for that because I don't think I am actually the eighth. I think I'm the eighth that has been credited. Mm-hmm. And I think that, well, I know for a fact because I've been in the rooms and I've seen it. It's really hard for women to get credited as producers in music. Mm-hmm. And I've seen women play the chords Direct the beat, sing the vocal, write the song, put everything together, pull in the producer, pull in the songwriter, book the studio. You are the producer, you know? That's right. But once the credits come out, their name is nowhere to be found. And it happens all the time. Time. Yes, it does. What has been the most challenging part thus far of being out on row? Um... Probably the same things that are, you know, the benefits. Um, I think it's been challenging starting from, like, poverty. Mm -hmm. You know, a single parent home. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like... I see it it so much more now. Like, I feel like a lot of my peers come from, like, really, really privileged backgrounds. Mm -hmm. You know, they, like, their parents are surgeons and this Mm -hmm. and that. And, like, you know, they have all these things. And I'm 100% self-made. So, um... I see how like so many people had like such a head start Mm -hmm. over me. And there was a period of time where that used to really like affect me. It doesn't anymore. Mm -hmm. It's fine. But um, looking back as a child, I can see how that has been a major challenge. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So far, what's been your highest career point to date? 
um, having RuPaul's Drag Race use one of my songs. No. Yes. Um, <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> so fun. <laughs> I was so excited. Yes. Um, yeah, that was definitely a high moment, though. Um, but for sure, like winning, you know, album of the year mm-hmm. has been like off off a project that I really believed in with the artist. Mm-hmm. I think is is just I would bet the whole house on John. Like to do something, it's so rare in music to do a project that you like you really believe in. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, like for me, we are was like if if I left this earth today. Did I say what I wanted to say on earth? Yeah. And I did yeah. with that album. I right. feel like I said, everything else is icing on the cake now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, but I, I, I got my message out. Yeah. And um, I'm so happy to, to have done that. So yeah. like, mm-hmm. yeah. And you winning that Grammy opened the door just a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Definitely. For the next woman of color. I mean, yeah. she's got so much going for her uh, production work. New music mm-hmm. and uh, see if she's uh, nominated again for the Grammys. Yeah, I mean everything that has just <laughs> happened for Autumn, just since she won her Grammy, mm-hmm. has been unbelievable. Right, the exposure, the amount of exposure, and um, 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 just able, you know, her really as a force being recognized mm-hmm. and and. Uh, doing good things for mm-hmm. songwriters, trying to do good things for right. the world and, and for the creative uh, the creatives out here. And mm-hmm. uh, she's unbelievable. I, I feel that she really works at helping others because of all the difficulties that she has faced in her early career, yeah. being a woman, being African-American. Yeah. And uh, she really explained a lot to us, you know, the difficulties of growing up in certain areas of the U.S. and you know, just really trying to get her talent out there, doors closing on her. But uh, the one thing about Autumn that I found fascinating is that she is the one that kicks the doors down. Yep. He, you say no, she'll find a way around that no. And uh, she's inspired me a lot to, you know, continue working, creating, and to continue songwriting. Yeah. She's just an unbelievable <laughs> person. Mm-hmm. Unbelievably giving. Right. And um, willing to help. Not wanting anything in return mm-hmm. and um, selfless, know, very selfless mm-hmm. person, very selfless. So please follow Autumn Rowe yes. on her social media mm-hmm. uh, and support her music yes. and projects and support her cause. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Thank you. All right. Next is oh my gosh, our beautifully funny. Mm-hmm. Uh, Amazing Anna Garcia Florence, fantastic. And she is fantastic. Yes. We had never met, thanks to you, Mr. Seth. I had the honor of meeting Anna. And at first, I was just like struck by her beauty. Yeah. I was just like staring, just like. So gorgeous. And then natural beauty. Natural. Just yeah. beautiful. Face, figure, everything. And then she opens her mouth. And in this industry, we know there's a lot of attractive people. And then they open their mouths, you're like, can we take the mic away from them? <laughs> um, she was just spectacular in her yes. demeanor, in her creativity. Just I I'm just like speechless because she writes songs for TV shows mm-hmm. that we've watched and, you know, the stories about Prince. But before we talk more about it, because I know we're going to be here for the next three weeks talking about her. How did you meet her? I met Anna through Jill Jones. Through our sister Jill Jones. Through our sister mm-hmm. Jill Jones. Jill and Anna were really great friends. Mm-hmm. And actually, the first time Anna's name came to me from Jill was... This is a little known secret. Back about almost 10 years ago now, um, I was working with a producer and we were trying to create a reality show. Mm, that's right. And we had, uh, it was music based, but it featured uh, women that were considered um, protégés of big artists. And 
our cast at that time was um, Jill Jones. We had Sue Ann Carwell, who was a was the <laughs> first woman that Prince ever produced anything on was Sue Ann Carwell mm-hmm. back in eighty one. And um, she grew up with Prince and Morris and mm-hmm. all of those guys. So she came with this this um, Minneapolis pedigree. She was actually the first, she was one of the very first lead singers of Flight Time mm-hmm. that became the time. Mm-hmm. So I want to mm-hmm. say Sue Ann might have been before Alexander O'Neill, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, we had Sue Ann. Um, we had Cat Glover. Really? Mm-hmm. I love Cat. Cat Glover, Sign of the Times, Prince Dancer, probably one of the most famous. Right. I I, uh, I want to throw it in there. She was great. I, I believe Cat, yeah. in my opinion, was the most powerful dancer Prince ever collaborated with. Yeah. To me, powerful, incredible. They had an unbelievable chemistry mm-hmm. yeah. together. And um, we had uh, Maxie Bond and Sherry Wells, who were two of the original Mary mm-hmm. Jane girls. Uh, we had Michelle, mm. who, of course, came from Dr. Dre. Okay. And. Uh, um, wow, you had quite a list. Yeah. And uh, Jill called me and she said, I have a friend named Anna. Mm-hmm. Anna, Anna, fantastic! I think she'd be great on the show. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was the first time that I'd heard the name Anna, fantastic. But it never <clears throat> that we we filmed the sizzle, never went anywhere. Right. But uh, yeah, it was quite a quite a quite a cast. It was quite a cast. But Anna's name was thrown in like in the last days of us trying to produce the show. So okay, so yeah. is this the same show that we spoke of when no. she was here? No. Oh, when no. with the phone call and all that. No. Okay. No. No. This right. is not the same show. <laughs> no, because Jill called her directly about okay. this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Jill called her directly about this. Ask you about. I remember a few years back, you. Uh, I think you either called me or you texted me, and you were thinking about posting the phone call. Mm. Yes, and and uh, and wow, Prince was uh, at one time he was he wanted to do he wanted to produce songs on you, mm-hmm. and um, and uh, Anna called me and she said, you know, she said, what do you think? And I think I said, just do it, just mm-hmm. do it. Mm-hmm. Do you have a copy of Fantasia Erotica? Yes. Yeah. Get a video camera, and you two do a routine to it. That sound like a good plan? Yeah. Oh, okay, I'll do it. <laughs> and hurry up. I have to do it like tomorrow? You gotta be somewhere important? Well... No. I'll be waiting. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. We're talking about the song. Yes. Oh. Yes. yes. What was the name of the song? Fantasia Erotica. Fantasia Erotica. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> Which was, oh, God. <laughs> there it yes. is. And you I, wrote that. Yes. Me and Prince wrote yeah. that together. And then? In the, in the cafe at Paisley Park. Mm. The little mm-hmm. cafe right yep. by Studio A. Mm-hmm. We sat there. I mean, he came up with the most of it, mm-hmm. and I wrote some parts, came up with some parts. We literally sat there together, mm-hmm. and there was a whole part that was Dutch. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, we came up with some of the parts, <clears> and <throat> then the Dutch part, obviously, I wrote the Dutch mm-hmm. part. Right, right, right. <laughs> the whole part, because there's a part where he, where I go, where he goes, I go, ooh, speak American, mm-hmm. no, talk the Dutch. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then I speak in Dutch. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And... There was a whole concept that we had together. There were two other girls that were working with me. He was going to put me in a girl group. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Yes. And he said, do you want to? He's like, you'll be the lead, but I want to have a girl group. Mm -hmm. I guess it was another version of. Mm -hmm. Right. (laughs) You know, Uh that's his whole thing. 
And so he said, do you want girls from America or girls from Europe? I said, well, I have friends. Because mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm going to be with these strange girls. I'm not going to know them. Right. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I have friends that I've already sang with. Mm-hmm. They both sing and they're in Europe. He was like, great. So then I went home and he goes, send me videos of these girls. Right, right. Oh my God. So I kept sending videos of the girls doing dances, Mm -hmm. dancing, auditioning, blah, blah, blah. And then Uh I found the two girls. Well, the one was my best friend Mm -hmm. who I'm still friends with today. The one who's my memory, Tamara. Who knows Tamara? (laughs) She's in the video. Oh, yes, yeah. Of Fantasia Erotica. And my other friend, Esther Mm -hmm. from Holland, Mm -hmm. who wants nothing to do with any of it. When I posted it, she was like, Oh my God, what are you doing? I'm a school teacher. And I'm like, shut up. (laughs) Oh, that is so cute. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, Prince produced this. You're in the video. She goes, yeah, I do not care. There are really people out there that are just like, I I don't care. I don't care about any of that. I'm a school teacher. I don't want the parents to see me like this. Yeah. Yeah. Being sexy and whatever. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We we know that people yeah. are like that sometimes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know. I'm like, okay. Wow. Um. So anyway, uh, we did this. I record. I recorded the song, mm-hmm. not the other girls. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, Prince and I wrote it. I recorded it. Mm-hmm. Me and the girls were putting the routines together mm-hmm. and doing all the stuff. Mm-hmm. I came up with the little outfits and mm-hmm. everything. I was like, kind of just putting the whole concept together, and then he was going to perfect it. Hello. You what? I just got a text message that I had. Have you seen it? Yes. Isn't it funny? I think it's really sweet. Hmm. I was cracking up. I love it. Really? Yeah, I put a call in for Warner Brothers in Holland. What? I put a call in for Warner Brothers in Holland and I told them that I wanted to sign you guys. Really? So they'll release it, but you gotta just rehearse and I gotta make the video. Hmm. So rehearse on it and um, I'll set up uh, how you can get over there and we'll see it, alright? Yeah. You gotta get serious about it though, right? Mm-hmm. You gotta do it every day, five or six hours, so it's really tight. And keep doing it until I call you to the meeting in about three or four days. Alright? Okay. I love you. I love you too. Bye. So yeah, that was the first time I, 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 you know, got to know her, but I didn't meet her until many years afterwards. I want to say I met Anna. Yeah, what? how long ago has this been? I think, well, the show was 2013, mm. but I met Anna, I want to say I met Anna right after Prince passed away. Mm. So you didn't know her before? I don't think I knew Anna beforehand. I don't think. I'm not well, sure. Well, you're the uh, plethora, the uh, encyclopedia of all that, all prints. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, if if I didn't, if 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 it wasn't right after he passed, mm-hmm. it was probably right before. Mm-hmm. It had to have been right before because all of us got we got mobbed by TMZ at Craig's one oh. night. Oh, well, you went to Craig's. Me and Jill and Anna. Oh, we ended my up gosh. on TMZ. Yeah. So, oh, fun. yeah. So mm-hmm. that was right after he passed away. So, mm-hmm. yeah. So, but I've known mm-hmm. Anna. I've been to birthday parties of Anna's. I've been to just hang out with Anna. We've, yeah, you know, we've got to hang out with her. She yeah. doesn't live too far. I could actually walk to your house, Anna. Fantastic. <laughs> um, I actually walked by her house and stalked it. Oh, that's where she, that's where she lives. <laughs> I want to hang out with her, so we should get together yeah. and have dinner and go get into some kind of trouble. Definitely. Exchange stories, you know, that are not on camera. <laughs> She's wonderful. Anna's a good time. Yeah. She's a good time. Beautiful girl. Follow her on social media yes. also. All of our, our guests. Next, Next, your friend. Yes, my great your friend. Your friend, the one and only Joe Isgro. Joseph Isgro, promoter, record promoter. Uh, producer, produced Hoffa, uh, an incredible legacy that he has. And we'll get to this once we get to your Motown days, but there's a connection that we have with Jeffrey Bowen. I'm oh, sure. So yeah. so we'll, we'll get a little further into that when we go into Motown. So, you, so after DECA, you went to Par- Paramount Records. Mm-hmm. I think uh, Paramount was 
next on the list, yeah. Okay. 1970. What was the biggest, what was the first, what was the first record that you broke that like went crazy? Um, Melanie. Mm. I don't know if you guys remember mm-hmm. Melanie or not. Yeah. Lay Down. Lay Down, Candles, yeah. the Candles album she did uh, yep. in Central Park. Uh, this was Brand New Roller Skate. Brand new, yeah. Was, I got a brand mm, new key. Yeah. 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 I remember that. that I loved, the, I bought the 45. Yeah, that was the first that I remember. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. That's pretty amazing. And then you went to uh, Motown. Well, the, I was at was Paramount. It? Paramount, yeah. What was most exciting about that is... Yeah. Godfather coming out. Remember, oh, Paramount yeah, yeah. did the movie. Yeah, yes. right? Right. So we were just really happy about the movie and everything. Yeah. But that, Paramount, and then after that, I think mm-hmm. I went to, um, I th- I don't know if I went to Roulette mm-hmm. right at the time. Was, that was right around the same time. I okay. did yes. work for a period of time for an independent distributor, which yeah. is Universal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think I went to uh, uh, work for Morris Levy at uh, Roulette. Okay. Shortly thereafter. Okay. 1974, yeah. you're at Roulette as National Director of Promotion. Yeah. And you got to oversee the company's publicity and advertising. No, I was a promotion guy. Promotion? Yeah, I did a promotion there. Damn you, Wikipedia. <laughs> yeah, no. Oh, yeah. Well, one good thing about it, they have me a year younger uh, year younger than what I am. Okay. <laughs> I was born in 48, I think. Oh. Now, when you were at Paramount, yeah. you were there with Billy Joel. And the Crusaders. Yeah, Jazz Crusaders. So Billy Joel was just, that was just like, he was starting out? It's before he started out, actually, Jeez. yeah. It was, he really was, I remember taking him around to, like, the, at that time they had the, what were they called, the little coffee places where they used to play, like in a village in New York. Uh, oh, um, yeah, that's coffee, what I, coffee, coffee shops. Yeah, like coffee houses. shops yeah. that would yeah. go around and play the, in those places and stuff. Like, I used to take them around to go to those places. That's right before Piano Man came. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I was just going to say Piano Man. Yeah. Wow, and, and wow. And Piano Man. Wow. So, now, we're in 1976. Six. Motown Records. Motown. Your big break. Over well, I, that's, I think, well, I, I worked regional right after Roulette, I went to work regionally for Motown. Okay, gotcha. First. Okay. And then the opportunity came up, and I was contacted, and they wanted me to come in and take over the national job in... Uh, in California, and that's when I came. I think that was seventy six. I think I'd been been working for them about a year before that as a regional guy. Okay, mm-hmm. okay. And I came in around that time. Okay, seventy six. I came to California. Okay, Barbra Streisand, Motown, Dinah Ross. Uh, he did the promo for uh, Saturday Night Fever. He did promos for some of the biggest soundtracks in the music industry. Mm-hmm. He produced, uh, like I said, Jimmy Hoffa movie. Yeah. Yeah. How did you meet him originally? I met him back in the day uh, when I was working on my solo album. Mm -hmm. And I was uh, looking for an outside person outside of Prince's management. Mm -hmm. Because it was getting a little too incestuous there at the time. Mm -hmm. And the focus was always on Prince, of course. Yeah. So that's how I met uh, Joe. And uh, we started to work together. And uh, I remember he said he's going to produce a movie. I thought, this is wonderful. Mm-hmm. So he produced Hoffa. And I know that Joe uh, Isgro, when we first met, uh, he always wanted to film you know, and produce movies. Yeah. And uh, I realized that he was a big Columbo fan, Peter Falk. He was a big Peter Falk fan. So Joe Isgro goes and produces the movie Hoffa. And... Uh, I call Peter Falk's manager. I arrange for Peter Falk to be at the premiere and to surprise my friend Joe. And I was able to pull that off. His, uh, his staff, Joe's staff, sent a car for Peter Falk. And I was staying there as a fly on the wall at the premiere. I got to see Peter arrive and just watch Joe. So as Peter arrives, I look at Joe, and you could just see Joe became that 16-year-old again. He geeked out. He was trying to be cool. And it was just a big moment for me, like a feather in my cap, that I was able to surprise Joe Isgro Mm -hmm. with, you know. It's like somebody saying, you know, my surprise guest would be David Bowie, right? I mean, that would have just been, like, incredible. So for Joe, that was really something. And it just made me happy to see how happy he was. Yeah. 
And there's photos of the two of them talking and all that. So the movie went out to receive an Oscar nomination. Nicholson mm-hmm. was in it. Mm-hmm. I believe he played Hoffa. Yeah. Danny DeVito. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just a great group of people. And Joe now is producing other films. I believe he's doing his biopic. A yeah. big production company is going to be filming his biopic. So I don't know who could play him. <laughs> uh, Elordi. Elordi. There's an actor. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Young, handsome guy. Mm-hmm. Elordi. Something like that. I think. I did a screenshot and texted it to, to Joe. Mm-hmm. I said he could play you. So that was something else. Joe Isgro. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Wow, man. Joe was great. Joe was, <clears throat> you know, he was he was just a wealth of information. And, and you know, it's so funny. It's so, it's so interesting <laughs> how the music world especially, it seems very vast and big, but it's really, really, really small. Mm-hmm. Right. And so many people are only not even six degrees. It's mm-hmm. usually two degrees right. <clears throat> uh, between other people. And the fact that Joe Isgro was a great friend of yours mm-hmm. and Joe Isgro also was instrumental in Jeffrey Bowen and Bonnie Pointer's right. whole careers. And Jeffrey Bowen used to be engaged to my Jennifer. It was just, it was just but that's how, that's Small how the music world. business is. That's, small. That's just how it is. It's really, really, really small. Yeah. You know, it was just like when um, when we saw Suzanne DePass at that birthday party, and I got mm. a chance to meet her for the first time. Right. And I mentioned that Gordy <laughs> house up on Sunset View Drive, and she's like, oh, yes, I've been to that house many times. I know, small world. Yeah, so it's just music business is really, really small. I know. But Joe, I mean, just being, you know, so active in all of it. And I remember just back in the day when we we'd go into his office, Joe had uh, an office filled with some of these most incredibly highly intelligent, talented, and beautiful women. And, you know, ladies' man, he would wear this, remember I told you, his white coat, cream-colored mm-hmm. coat with all of his jewelry and, you know, hey, Apollonia. <laughs> hey, that sounded like him, didn't it? Mm-hmm. Wow. <laughs> And uh, yeah, we all had crushes on him. <laughs> Fantastic. Just an amazing human being. You know, my friend, the lion, Joe is <laughs> And of course, last but definitely not least, our season finale, season one finale interview, two-part interview mm-hmm. with the unbelievable Susanna Melvoin. Melvoin. Susanna v- Melvoin. Uh, incredible singer, actress. Gorgeous was engaged to Prince, and she is a twin sister of Wendy Melvoin mm-hmm. from Wendy and Lisa, mm-hmm. the great singing group, producing group, Susanna. Yeah. That that <laughs> was yes. an amazing, amazing yes. interview. And there was so much you guys just didn't get a chance to mm-hmm. hear that, you know, just in conversation, but... That was uh that was really great. We had mm-hmm. a lot of comments about Susanna's interview. And I wanna say Jill and Susanna probably are the number one <laughs> and number two mm-hmm. most viewed, I do believe. Really? Uh of the seasons. Uh most people, I think most Prince fans know, I knew that you were supposed to be the leading lady in under the cherry moon. Yes, I was. Okay, so um, I'd like to talk about that. Let's talk about that. So, yes. Um, yeah, it was all designed. I mean, mind you, the, the yes. Okay, so I can't give you all the prehistory, but I'll okay. just tell you, like, okay. yes. So I was supposed to be the lead in Cherry Moon. Mary Sharon, right? Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Where should I begin just to give you some context? Um, I think I'm just going to shoot to 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 Paris. So okay. we're in Paris mm-hmm. and we're ready to scout locations. That's mm-hmm. why we're there. We're going to end up draw, flying to the south of France, but he wants to be in Paris for a week or two. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, yay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm all good with that. And we're staying at the Crillon, I mean, the yeah. most beautiful hotel. Yes. Yeah. And we have this great room overlooking the Arc de Triomphe. Oh. It's just a beautiful, beautiful time. And we're there having the best time. Mm-hmm. Oh, and it's the, I've never seen him mm. 
so relaxed really and so connected mm-hmm. in a way he'd never been like Man. we were playing guitar together in our you know in our socks and underwear on the bed and just you know and calling my sister and lisa he wanted to call them like and this is not something he would normally do mm-hmm. is like let's call a bunch of people that we know together and like have fun he it just you know not that way. Yeah. So we were like he's like let's call Wendy and Lisa and I'm like well we're in Paris and they're in L A so it's mm. gonna be a little he's like wake him up wake him up. <laughs> um, so we would do things we just having a really great boyfriend girlfriend time. Yeah, really connecting like yeah. just like couldn't be better. Yeah, and um, we're getting ready to go to Nice to scout some locations, but it's. Five o'clock in the morning, I'm asleep, he's awake, and he comes and wakes me up. Can I talk? I can mm-hmm. wake up, wake up, wake up. And I turn mm-hmm. over and I look at him, and he's as pale as a ghost. Mm. And I sort of sit up and I was like, are you okay? Are you okay? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm okay. Can you come here for a minute? I said, sure. And so we go outside on the patio as the, as the sun is coming up mm-hmm. through the Arc de Triomphe. Mm. And he sits me up on top of the ledge and he sits there and he looks at me and he takes my hands. He says, I have something I want to tell you. And I'm like, okay. Mm. He said, I don't want you to be in the movie. Mm. I was like, and I thought, okay, what is, Mm. you know, what are you, what are you doing here? Mm -hmm. What's happening now? I don't want you to be in the movie. I want you to be my wife. Oh. oh. And I was like, I was so, I was like. Oh, what? You know, meanwhile, I'm like, I'm just waking up. I've got mascara down to here. I'm a mess. And which was made it even more beautiful mm. because that wasn't normal for, you know, mm-hmm. we were pretty much always put together. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And this trip was not about being put together. There was something about a real, we were revealing each other Mm -hmm. to each other in a way that I'd never seen him. I know he'd not seen me this way. It just had never happened, this really intimate. And so it came in the most authentic way. And I said, yes. I was like, yes, Mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. And we proceeded to have this glorious few days Mm -hmm. and he said you know and then we talked a little bit more and he was like i'm gonna go do the scouting and we are gonna look at other people for the part Mm -hmm. and i just want you to know that that's what's gonna happen Mm -hmm. and he said and it's you know the film company needs a a bigger name anyway even Mm -hmm. though that's not necessary because it's my movie and i can do what i want and Mm -hmm. i was like it's okay it's really mm-hmm. okay. And, uh, and then he got some tapes the following day, mm-hmm. and Kristen Scott Thomas was one in one of those tapes, mm-hmm. and he loved Jacqueline Bisset. Uh, yes. And so he thought she looked like Jacqueline Bisset to him. Yeah. At that bit. time, yeah. it was something about her, and he loved her sort of erudite ways, mm-hmm. and it was great. So, and I was, you know, at that point, I was just like, okay, I didn't want to. I was like, yeah. What are you going to do? I'm fine. I'm fine. Yeah. yeah. What am yeah. I going to do? Yeah. I was like, I was fine. I was fine with it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know, I, I'm looking up on my phone here and I just wanted to talk oh, about. Wow. Okay. The unbelievable season <clears throat> that we have had. Uh, Jill Jones, part one, 42,000 views just on its own. Wow, really? Mm-hmm. Yep. Wow. That's only only um, next to Sus- uh, Susanna, Susanna's mm-hmm. Next, the first premiere episode mm-hmm. we did, Just Me and You, is next. Mm-hmm. Is in three, my brother Andre. Awesome. And then, I mean, it just goes on and on and on, but... You know, we have, I think, for us doing this ourselves Mm -hmm. and it just really being a grassroots effort, Mm -hmm. season one 
was extremely, extremely well received. Mm, thank you. Thank you. I mean, we we've gotten almost two hundred thousand views. Wow. And we've got almost seven thousand subscribers that just follow mm-hmm. us. And you know, it's, it's getting there. It's getting there, and it's gonna get. It gets better, and every season's gonna be better and better. bigger, and all of that stuff. But yeah. I just wanted to say thank you to you guys because. Yep. Thank you so much. You know, this was. No heavy promotion. No, this was really grassroots and people yep. loving Apollonia and loving uh, our guests and mm-hmm. just, yeah. It's a family effort. We, you know, were approached to do, uh, I was asked like years ago to do a podcast and then we had a couple of people that wanted to do it. And we just decided that the best way to do it is just to do it ourselves. Yeah. And uh, we do everything ourselves. Yeah. We're a team. We have a great amount of fun doing it it's uh, hard work but we love doing it and we've been so grateful that you know my friends have come along to come and talk story as we say in on oahu and uh enjoy ourselves and we wouldn't be able to do this first and foremost without you yep because we're doing this for you this is a way for us to communicate with you and just we just want to have fun when people ask well what's the format of your show i said just having fun with my friends. Yeah. It's nothing political. I don't want to get religious. You know, I don't want it to be, you know, I just want it just to be fun. And for you to meet our friends and to get to know them and to get to know us better. Yeah. And we want to get to know you better. So, you know, keep writing in. You have any questions, you name it, we'll answer. Yeah. Uh, we have uh, giveaways also from our guests. Yeah. And I'm super excited of who we have coming up guests that we have uh, booked for our new season. So I'm grateful uh, for friends. I'm so grateful. And I'm grateful for my team that I have, my Apollonia studio team. We have Howard, we have Samantha, we have Manny, we have Mark, and we have Moss. We have great people. And we've had, Gerardo and Gerardo Max and Max and Tati and Tati and, and just it's yeah, a group it's yeah. a group we have a couple lawyers also that yeah. are working on our behalf but it's just been great fun and I'm just and Dakota Dakota yeah so we've wow. we've had, we've got yeah. a, we've got a, we've got a great group of people and mm-hmm. family and uh, yeah it's just getting bigger mm-hmm. and better and we want to thank you for your viewership and and um, and you know. For, for showing us that this is a show that you want to watch. Yeah. And thank you, Mr. Seth, for being here. I Aww, love you so thank much. Thank you. I love you so I much. I couldn't do it without him. I love you Could you, you so imagine much. how boring it'd be just my skinny ass sitting here trying to talk story? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> the heck. I love you. I love you too, baby. Mm. Thank you so much thank for joining you. us. Thank you. We'll see you next season. Yes. Stay tuned. It's going to have more great guests, more great stories, Mm -hmm. more surprises than ever. Wait till you see who we're filming today. I am so excited. Thank you. Sorry. (gasps) Anybody know where the Brenda Bennett session is? What the fuck? (laughs) What the hell? (laughs) What on earth is going on today? (laughs) What's going on? Oh my god, no. <laughs> Hello? Oh my god! Oh my god. My family, my sister.